I wouldn't call race. I would call just diversity. We are not really allowed to talk about these differences nowadays, I think. But talking about them is actually good to understand better what's, what are humans as, as a species, how we are similar and how we are different as well. And this doesn't mean worse or better. Because race became taboo after the Nazis, even 60 years on, we're still confused about what it is. Unwilling to mention it, unable to tell what's racist, leaving us blind to what science could tell us about race. But what of Otta Benga, the pygmy who at the beginning of the 20th century was displayed as a living example of racial inferiority. Otta Benga was kept out of the public eye for four years. He eventually ended up in an unlikely little backwater, Lynchburg, Virginia. There are no memorials to him here, but he was adopted by some of the locals, and a few still know of him. My husband, Chancellor Edward Spencer, used to speak about this strange person, Otta Benga. So the only thing that I can tell you about Otta Benga is what I have heard from my husband. He was four years old when he and Otta Benga played. And uh, the things that he would tell would be just what most boys would talk about, how they would hunt, how he taught them to hunt, and things of that nature. But to my knowledge, he never spoke of his homeland or anything. In Lynchburg, Otto Benga became known as Otto Bingo. He had his pointed teeth capped and attended a Baptist seminary where he started to study English. I never knew him, but from what I hear from other people talking about him, it's always very nice. It's like he was a young boy lost and, uh, in the woods. I don't think he would have ever been happy without returning to his homeland, I really don't. For the next few years, Otta Benga worked in a tobacco factory, apparently trying to save enough money to return to the Congo. I could talk on and on, but eventually I guess the whole world would know about this small pygmy man that never dreamed of living in a strange town like Lynchburg, Virginia. He'll be in the books, and kids will read about that there are other people who look different, but they still are human beings. But Otta Benga never did make it home. He died in Lynchburg in 1916, ten years after he'd been on show at the Bronx Zoo. Nobody knows for certain where he's buried. But local resident Laura Munson thinks she's found the likely spot an unmarked grave at the White Rock Cemetery. Well, I just sort of accidentally found this place and I kept seeing this cemetery uh, on a map. I had to do some historic research on it and so every day I'd drive around and I couldn't couldn't find it. Finally I stopped uh, up here at Miss Smith's house and asked her if she knew about a cemetery out here. She said, oh, yes, it's in my backyard. You see those, uh, those four corner posts with the chains going from one to the other? That's where it is. Nobody really accepted him. He was a pygmy. But he wasn't that short. There were persons who really did try to embrace him and treat him, and treat him with some dignity and some respect. But I'm sure there were others who just maybe saw him as a novelty, you know, as someone who was different. And probably laughed at him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the end, Otabenga may have realized that he'd never be fully accepted as a human being. 
that he was just too different. Local records show that one night, in the barn behind the general store, he removed the caps from his teeth and then killed himself with a shotgun. <laughs> 